Hello, it's Ronnie Yoga Devi coming to you from my home in Leamington, Ontario. And first of all, I want to tell everybody who has seen my uh, previous video with regards to what was happening with my eyes, what has actually transpired. I was taking a medi medication that I had never taken before for uh, a problem that I was having with my tonsils uh, and my throat. Uh, and that medication caused an allergic reaction, which then caused my eyes to the upper, upper eyelids to swell up. And it was very uh, disturbing. It wasn't painful, but whenever you have swelling, somewhere it is not good <laughs> any sort of edema is not good so if you ever have some sort of swelling somewhere find out what's going on get to a doctor find out what's going on and sometimes all you need to do is is move more massage more but in the case of this it was an allergic reaction to the medication, I called the pharmacist and said, mm, day four of this swelling happened after about a week and a half of taking this medication. And um, the pharmacist was excellent. He said, stop taking it right away. I'm going to look into this and I will get back to you. Within half an hour, he called me and said, yeah, let's go back to what you took before when you had this issue in the past. It's a much more expensive medication, but it works. So we're going back to the old other medication. Uh, I don't I don't actually need the medication at this point in time, but it's good to have it on hand for when this esophageal problem happens. Basically what happens is the esophagus kind of tightens up and then I have problems swallowing and it's not good because it makes it difficult to eat food. Um, so <laughs> definitely, you know, when it does act up, I, I do need to do something. So anyhow, I just want to thank you all for doing that. And, um, and just for being there, I got so many people reaching out to me, uh, in all the various uh, social media platforms that I am on and also uh, right through uh, directly through the, the YouTube channel so I thank you all of you from the bottom of my heart like thank you thank you so much I really appreciate that this is the kind of thing that the internet can really help with a lot of people say oh, the internet is bad and all that and it can be it can be but it can also be wonderful for sharing information and for helping others. So again, for those of you who were, were there for me, I had a, a lovely doctor uh, f come, come and send me some information. I had a lady who had a similar condition come to me to say it might be this. And, you know... <sighs> I had people wanting to send things to me <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, thank you so much. I have got it solved. And an another thing that came out of it was one of my friends from Europe said, you should be putting castor oil on your throat. And I'm like, oh yes, castor oil. I go through stages where I use a lot of castor oil packs and then forget about it for a while. But, um, I, I'm not putting castor oil packs. I'm just putting castor oil right on here. And also, um, I started to do this, uh, thumping the thymus, because that helps your immune system to kind of calm down. It, it down regulates the overactivity of the immune system when there's a immune system response. And when there's swelling, there's an immune system response. So Again, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate that. That's what that's what 
human beings are put here on this earth to do is to help each other out. So thank you. Again, I know I've said thank you a million times, but <sighs> not a million, but a lot. So I'm going to move on to another topic. And this just comes out of an, an experience that, that I, I kind of had today. Um, I had an ex experience, um, and, and I was kind of just thinking about the experience. I won't go into the experience. I'll just tell you what I came across. So I do a puja every morning. And that puja was taught to me by my guru, who has left this earth, earth plane. His uh, title was Rajrishi. This is what everybody called him was Rajrishi. But um, Prabhu, Prabhu Lal Rajrishi Ji lived in the Himalayas up in a, a beautiful place and ran a very small local ashram and he taught me Panch Mahayagi which is a three-part puja followed by two two practices which are a meditation with a mantra that he gave me and you use the meditate the 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 mantra in the meditation and then you use the mantra in japa for which you use your, your mala. So, um, I do that every day and it's, it's very helpful. Um, I'll get into that another day. And I think there is another, uh, another video in which I talked a little bit about the punch Mahayagi. So, uh, if you have a guru, what you're considered by the guru, guru is a devotee of the guru and in uh, I'm not sure whether it's Sanskrit or, or, or Hindi but you call it a bhakti and bhakti is a devotee and um, um, I think there's a, a little bit more there that if you want to look into it uh, you can find I, I've read books and books and books on it um, but bhakti is a is a is a very important term and I would highly suggest that you research it if you're interested in that so for a bhakti again a, a devotee of a guru or of God um someone who is connected to the divine on some level. Um, when you have to make a decision, it's important to involve a higher source than yourself. So when you're making a decision, it's good to call upon God. And it doesn't matter what religion you belong to. It's good to call upon God. So when you make that decision, what is suggested that you do is talk to God and say, Bhagavani unishtam unishtam. And what that means is, hey God, your wish is my command, essentially. And that is so cool because it's, it's so similar to abracadabra, which means the same thing. It, it's like, your wish is my command kind of thing. And that this is what you would say if you wanted to, to have something take place. And it's just kind of beautiful and simple knowledge, a very beautiful and simple knowledge. So back to the puja. Puja and any other spiritual practice, whether it's uh, meditation 
or prayer or puja, a yoga practice, any sort of spiritual practice. It is just so important for you to do. And when people do all of these things, not all of them, but it, especially prayer and puja, we think we're doing that for God. But in reality, God does not need these things. God does not need us to worship. The divine does not need our worship. What the divine needs is for us to take care of ourselves because we are put here to take care of the earth. So the divine doesn't need us to do all these practices. We need to do them so that we can fulfill our obligation as human beings on this planet. Think about that for a second. God doesn't need our practices. You do. We do. That is where the importance lies. Our practices, I made a little note I want to look at and make sure I don't miss it. Anything that I was thinking of when I was considering what I was going to talk about today. Our practices help develop our discipline and we get the best benefit from them when we practice daily. Even one day missed, some cells are not getting trained. I learned that from another girl, not, not, um, not Prabhu Love or Jushiji. I learned that from Shushu Ravi Shankar, that even one day you miss of your meditation practice or your Kriya practice, if you do a Kriya practice, it means that the cells that were up to be worked on that day will miss it. So it, this makes a lot of sense if you look at it scientifically because your cells are constantly renewing in your body. Your, your entire body on a scientific level is completely changed every year. And that's every single year. Your body is not the same. And that's fantastic news if you're thinking about trying to change your body. If you're trying to put on some muscle, if you're trying to lose a little bit of belly, <laughs> it is, or, or a little bit of cheek in your neck. It's so important to understand that your body is constantly changing. The cells are renewing each and every day. We think about the cells renewing on our hands, putting the cream on our hands and making sure that that skin is nice and healthy on our bodies, making sure we exfoliate, get rid of the dead skin on our faces, cleansing, moisturizing, and putting nice, nice products on our skin to make ourselves look beautiful. But we don't think deeper because deeper into the skin, there's muscles, there's blood flow, there's a lot. When you look at the science of the skin, and I, I do encourage you to do that, go and look and see at the different layers of the skin and see how much is going on in the skin. And then below the skin, the muscles, how the muscles act upon the bones, how the muscles and bones impact your joints, all this sort of thing is just 
miraculous when you really look at what the body does for us without us even thinking about it. Your heart doesn't need you to do anything for it to work. And your brain does so much for you that you don't even think about. When you conceive of walking, putting one step in front of the other, your body automatically knows what to do. Once you've been trained to walk as a little toddler, you forever know how to do that. And it's the same with meditation. It's the same with yoga asana. It's the same with so many things that we do in life. Cooking a certain dish, once you know how to do it, you don't need the recipe anymore. Once you've mastered um, making a specific dish, you've mastered it. It's very simple. And mastery over the, over the body cannot happen without mastery over the mind. You know? So it's, it's really amazing. The more you think about how much you really can do to change your body through the mind, not just with the things that you do each day, not just putting on your clothes, taking care of your skin and putting on makeup, that, cause, because the true beauty comes from within. How you care for yourself is extremely important, but so is how you care for others, how you care for others around you who you don't even know. You know, a, a neighbor who you don't really even know, uh, just saying hello, just being kind. All of this is extremely important. Extremely important. So, again, back to our practices of whatever they are for you. They're different for everybody, but say, for instance, if you do meditation or a Kriya practice, um, if you do it every day, you're training the body. You're training the cells who are, that are up for training for that day. 365 days a year, you're doing this on a regular basis. You're doing this on a regular basis. And it affects our health if we miss a day. You might not really notice it if you miss a day. But if you miss a day, what happens is you start to fall out of your habit. Then maybe you miss two days, three days, four days. And then before you know it, you missed a week. And it's harder to get into the habit of doing something when you've lost the habit. So if you've got some practices that you're doing, please recommit to them today. Because those practices can make a difference in your health. Whether or not you come in contact with a, a virus or a bacterial thing, infection type thing that someone else has, you come in contact with it if your cells have been trained without a break, then you're more likely to be able to have the appropriate immune response for your body to deal with that. And I don't know, I just think that's really cool. Science is absolutely awesome when you can apply it to your life. That's what I think anyways. I just, the more you can learn about how your body reacts to your own choices, your own actions, your own thoughts, your words that you tell yourself, the words that you tell others. Because there's this thing in our brain it's called the reticular activating system. And it basically keeps track of everything. It records everything that you ever tell it. So if you tell yourself good things, 
it remembers that. If you tell yourself bad things, it remembers that. It remembers all of it. So let's try to tell ourselves more positive things. Tell others more positive things because it, it, it's not just what you tell yourself. It's what is in your mind, in your thoughts, in the words that you think in your mind, and in the words that you externally send out to others, and the words that you write as well. This is why things, things like um, mantras are so helpful. This is why people practice telling themselves good things in the morning. Uh, this is why people sit in front of the mirror and, and do practices like tell themselves they love themselves or they're beautiful or whatever they feel the need to tell themselves because they don't believe about themselves. Or they don't love themselves. And that is the most important thing. If you don't love yourself, you can't expect anybody else to love you, can you? So you need to love yourself first. And once you've got that down, then you can reach out to others and love them. And I don't mean in a in a relationship kind of way in, in in a romantic relationship kind of way i mean like even friendship you won't have true friends if you aren't a friend to yourself and friendship must be a part of any romantic relationship as well. So at the end of the day, yes, that is going to affect the person that you attract into your life on a romantic level as well. Because you, you're not going to have a lasting, healthy relationship with anybody if you don't love yourself first. And so I guess that's about all for today. It's Rani Yoga Devi signing off. And we've done a longer, longer video today than we usually do. And thank you for sticking in with it. And again, thank you to all the people who reached out to me when I had the problem with my eyes. I thank God that it's over. But I am very grateful to my followers, every single one of you especially those of you who have reached out to me. Thank you so much. God bless. Namaste. Have a wonderful evening or day, whatever it is where you are right now here in Canada. It is 9 p.m. We just had the time change. Our um, I don't know why we do that, but uh, we're still changing the time. It's spring we move it the clock forward and in fall we move it back so we just moved it back an hour and it's nuts because you're getting up in the dark and you're and, and you're coming home from work in the dark I don't know why we still do it they talked about uh, ending this silly practice but they have not yet done it anyhow I'm setting off again <laughs> I have too much to talk about. Anyhow, if there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about or discuss or look into, uh, I'd be very happy to do that. Just let me know. Again, namaste. Rani Yoga Devi, signing off.